welcome to another episode of Human Life with me, Olamide Ayodele. The World Health Organization recently classified gaming addiction as a medical problem warranting treatment by medication and by psychotherapy. The question on everyone's minds has been, is this situation so serious as to warrant classification as a medical condition? Today I'm going to be discussing this very interesting subject with Sumbo Aderiola, who is a senior solicitor and top Siobona, an information security consultant and lecturer. Welcome, ladies, to Human Life. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Welcome. So, Sumbo, I'm going to come to you first. Do you accept or do you agree with this classification by the World Health Organization that gaming addiction is a medical problem that should now be treated clinically with medication, psychotherapy, just like drug addiction or other forms of addiction. Do you agree with that classification? Well, before I come to whether I agree with it or not, children who go online, who engage in gaming and have friends and people that they undertake um, social interaction online with are within the control and the tutelage of their parents. Yes, I They agree. should be monitored. They should be supported with anything that they're doing. To the point where a child becomes addicted, that means the parent has neglected their role in providing guidance and boundaries in relation to how much they are exposed to games and things online. I agree. Because of that, I believe the classification as a medical problem is incorrect. Incorrect insofar as we are giving excuses to parents mm. who have failed and are lacking in their roles as parents to put the proper boundaries that is required for their children as to how much access mm -hmm. and how much time they are spending gaming or online or whatever. Yes. That is why I believe that we are just providing another crutch for people to excuse their inability or unsuccessful attempts at parenting. I think parents need to step up to the mark and society, we need to come together to require parents to parent pretty much be who they are. Yeah. Right, so I totally agree with Simbo here. Um, you know, when I heard about this earlier this year, I had my reservations as well. But however, we must consider the kids, the young, our young people suffering from this as, as we speak. Yeah. We also, you know, I, I believe that classifying um, gaming addiction as a medical condition serves as a way of recognizing the predicament faced by our as young... As a problem. As a problem. It yeah. is a problem. It is a problem. So it's a medical problem. It is a pred medical problem, okay. you know. And so it serves as a way of actually recognizing there is a problem and how do we deal with this problem. Particularly for those children that are already far gone. The parents Absolutely. have not done or they've done whatever. Yeah. This and is it's it. it's had a consequence. So and where there are children now dealing with the consequence, that's where this classification the, comes in. And this is where I agree with it. You know, what Simbo said is, you know, as parents, we must put boundaries, regulations in place. Totally correct. But the, the kids suffering from this right now, what's the way out? You know, so hopefully this classification might help our young kids, you know, provide them with the advice and the treatment they need to move on in life and, you know, to be better people in life. I, I agree, I yeah. agree. I agree that they, they, we need to have the opportunity and um, the support available for the children mm -hmm. that are suffering now. My problem is that by having this classification, there, and this is another thing that parents will say, oh, my child is suffering from, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, is the problem that I'm having with it, that there's so many names and labels that are around mm -hmm. um, in this present society that has not been prevalent in, um, in years oh, gone by. That, that's my concern about it. We have a, a few, but I, I don't know the numbers, I don't know the statistics of children that have um, this addiction currently. Mm -hmm. But by the time we start labelling it now, I can force tell that in 10, 20, 30 years' time, mm -hmm. this will be an epidemic. I can see that. Uh, I 
I can, I can see that too. Foresee that. I, I can see that. Particularly with yeah. Fortnite. Exactly. Do you, do you ladies know about Fortnite? Yes. Do you yes. know, recently... It's becoming it's, an epidemic. Of course. You know, in Australia, this was, I think it was on, I think I read it on the internet somewhere, on the news somewhere, um, a lady from Australia, had, uh, the, the, the son headbutted this the, the woman the late the, the mother oh my God. because she tried to confiscate the, the game the game mm. you know so that's one of the consequences so they're now of even becoming violent and aggressive as becoming violent aggressive especially with addiction. that game that leads you know, to that my next night. question topsy that leads to my next question being a lecturer mm -hmm. of sixth form yeah. students you obviously deal with children who are right bang at that age mm -hmm. where they're into gaming yeah. What are the typical symptoms that parents need to look out for mm -hmm. in relation to gaming addiction? So this you recognise the symptoms? Oh yeah, you will, because they come into class very late. Mm. They don't want to socialise with anyone. They don't want to speak to anyone. Wow. You know, they don't want to. Um, they they don't want to get involved in the day to day activity mm -hmm. in the classroom, right. and. Um, they neglect their personal hygiene as well, you know, and they become very aggressive, very rude to you, you know, and you could, you could tell that, you know, these this kids have not probably slept very well because they've been on the games all night, all night. And to be honest with you, when it comes to that stage where they're very addicted, it's very hard it's for the parents to even to do anything with. to deal with it. And this is where my point to Shimbo is, when it gets to that stage, mm. what do parents do? Yeah. If it's a medical, if they need a medical help, then so Just be it. it. So that's so where professional it. help that's, Exactly, if they need that professional in. help, then do it. As I said about this Australian woman, she said she's tried everything possible. Oh my God. And nothing has worked for this, for this boy. Mm. So she, she as, as she, she said, it's a chronic case. Oh she can't God. do anything else. He She's comes out. lost the power and the control. Lost everything. Everything. He's, he's not been in education in two years. Oh my God. He only comes out once mm. in a week. Mm. Plays the games, comes, comes out to eat. And, and he that's, goes, goes back, back to play the game. So he's totally so isolating himself. Totally isolating himself. That's a chronic. Okay, himself. so in this situation, yeah. I would agree that there needs to be some professional it's support. Absolutely. But we all know that currently there is a huge demand and a huge drain on um, child, uh, adolescent uh, mental health services. Yes. We have children that are self-harming. We have children that have low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. We have children that are being bullied. We have children that have eating disorders. This is just... Just another, another drain yes, on yeah. a very scarce resource. That's my problem about it. And I yeah. think that we need to spend more time. Um, the government needs to spend more time. Local authorities need to spend more time to educate and support families to not get to this it's stage. Point. Absolutely, you're right. You're so very having, right. Having yeah. talked about the negatives now, we see what's happened to this woman in Australia and yeah. her son. We see what how children can just get so badly affected that they're neglecting personal hygiene, neglecting their studies. The future doesn't look too bright for these kids, does it? Mm -hmm. Are there any positives at all to gaming? Why does it exist in the first place? Are there any positives that you can think of? Well, <laughs> I'm not a gamer. I have two children. I have a 19-year-old son that enjoys gaming. But it, it, for me, as a person, I don't see a lot of positives around gaming. I can understand that you can use it to distract your children. You can, for a few minutes here and there, um, it can improve their motor skills when they're playing on these mm -hmm. little um, handheld devices or controllers and everything. I can see that. But the problem is, it's a slippery slope for me. Yeah. I, I can't see... I would rather have a child be reading, interacting with me, having conversations and debates mm -hmm. in the house, or for us to go out and expand their knowledge base, yes. rather than sitting on, in some nameless, faceless forum. World, in the, yeah. Yes, they're not interacting with people. They yeah. are just online, playing these games, often shooting, killing. So, Sumbo, you say they're not interacting. You know, they are when they play their group games, you yeah. know. Mm. That's a form of yeah. integrating, you know, know they, 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 exactly, they can connect with. Exactly, they can connect with. Exactly, 
yeah. on the system and they're like with socialising. With their kids in school as well. Is that a positive? Well. Would you well, see that as a that, positive? I would see that as a positive because as similar as well, I've got two children. One is 17, the other one is six. He doesn't really play, but the 17-year-old plays. But we put in regulations and we monitor when he plays it. So we would say to him, you're not playing the games during the weekdays. You're only playing it weekends. So... Yes, um, he's, he's, he started working, um, bless him, and Ew. yesterday um, a post came through, a package came through, and it was um, addressed to him, and I thought, oh, okay, was what's, it ordered, it, what's now? it ordered now? <laughs> Opened it, and it was FIFA 19. Oh, wow. And I thought, okay, fine. So he came back, and I said, I need to have a chat with this guy. And then I said, okay, why are you playing? Why, why have you bought this? Mum. I study very hard, and he does study very hard. Mm -hmm. This is just a, you know, a way of distressing as, as, yeah so really i would not totally write it off yeah you know it's just putting boundaries in place as Sumba said True. so now that kids. you've talked yeah. touched on boundaries yeah. let's discuss the role of parents so Sumba, you had mentioned that parents are sort of like probably lapsing mm. in their controlling and monitoring and basically supervising yeah. what these children are doing with gaming, which is what has led to some of them These getting addicted. Cases. Yes. yes. So how can parents regulate and control gaming in the household so that it doesn't become a special case or a peculiar situation like that boy mm -hmm. in Australia? Like Topsy has said, you have to have dialogue with your child and they have to understand that you as, your, as their parent are giving them a particular time that they can engage in this gaming. Like I said, I'm not a gamer, but I understand. And you've given really good examples of why a child may want to engage in gaming, mm -hmm. but it has to be within restricted times. And um, you have to, as a parent, be able to know what they're engaging in. Mm -hmm. They may be playing FIFA, to start with, but you don't know what are the online forums that they're Absolutely. going into. Yeah, so right. me as a parent, what I've been doing and what I've done for many years is that there is a rule. My son's door is always open when he's playing his game. He has a TV in his room, he doesn't really watch. He uses it for game, games and everything like that. But, uh, but there's restricted times after you've done your homework, after you've done your chores, after you've interacted with us as mm -hmm. a family. Absolutely. But, there's also bedtime. So we, we, we don't have this, okay, you've done everything until this time and then you can play forever. No, because there's always tomorrow. There's school to go to. There's, there's activities yes. that you need to engage in. Yes. So you need to have specified times when your child can engage in this game, uh, with yes. these games or on these online, online forums. But you also have to check periodically when mm -hmm. they are online to see who they are interacting with one thing that i do with my son is he's got his headphones he's talking and everything i walk into his room oh so who's online with you who are you speaking to sometimes i'll grab the headphones and i'll put it on and i'll say hello and everything i know most of his friends can i ask you a quick question yes i've heard about parents who have said i would never intrude on my child's privacy or spy on my kids do you see that as a form of intrusion of your child's privacy or spying is Not that no. going too far oh. when you when you take his headphones and you speak to his friends and you monitor who he's talking to or interacting with it's parenting. It's parenting. <laughs> it's parenting i agree I with you yes. ladies I'm i just totally... i just had to put that out there yeah i totally some agree parents with are nervous about doing that because the child mm -hmm. would then say mom you're intruding on my privacy my yeah. because a lot happened this is a totally you know crazy generation i would say that because there's so many right. rules yes. and there's so many laws and so many they're just things that are being said by different people so kids have their own rules about how they believe they should be treated and parents have their rules but i'm totally agreeing with you in saying parents need to parent and that's that's it, it. you're totally right they in the family life you you have structure yeah gaming should be part of that structure yeah, yeah. regardless 100 percent. yeah so you, lay down, be, you lay down the rose and you say, this is when I want you to go online. And if you're going online, you know, talk about, the, I think most importantly, you need to speak to the kids. Yeah. Speak to them, find out why they're playing those games, why they want to 
you know, sit there and play for hours. And if they're doing that, there's a way you can you can reduce the amount of times they play. You can play as a t as a family as well. Yeah. yeah. That's another way to get involved. Yeah. You know, you can play as a family. Yeah. As Simba said, you know, try and find out who they're playing with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we must remember our kids have known nothing in this world apart from internet and Gaming. Yes, That's this is their known. world. This is their world. Is their world. So yeah. we must put that into consideration when yeah. we're, you know, you know, trying to restrict or monitor what they're doing. For me balance is key yeah, you yeah. just need to balance totally, it yeah, yeah that's that's I the agree. way i see it yes yeah. just yes. going back to your point about infringing on their privacy i don't believe i infringe upon any privacy because i have that relationship with my Absolutely. child he understands that i am the parent yes mm -hmm. and we interact it's easy yes. i yes. can be on the phone and the same way he can interrupt me and say oh is that auntie or oh, is that is it that yes. person yeah. yes. that's so it's such an easy flow yes i think parents need to understand that they need to get to that place yeah. so important you need to have that relationship with, with your yes. child that is because it. if that relationship is not there it's such then. an action as to go in and say oh who are you talking to could be seen yes. as what, what are you doing here? Why are you intruding on my privacy if you don't have that with your child? Yeah. So I totally agree with you. As Simba said, you know, there was, um, I think a few weeks ago, my son was playing with his friends and they could hear my voice as well. And you could, one of them said, is that your mum again? <laughs> They're used to me, you know, being around, around when he's playing yeah, the games. Because yes, yes. I need to know who he's playing we with. Always, we always yeah. need to be in the background. And another thing yes. is, why you can invite the kids around as well to yeah, all play so in, your, in, in, your, your in your house. Mm -hmm. That's a way of monitoring these kids yes, as well. Yes, they eat you out of house and home. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> now that we've touched on interaction online because in the virtual world they don't need to necessarily come together in one person's home with their controllers they mm -hmm. can be in their different homes yeah. and connect because I get that with my sons they're constantly connecting with all of their cousins mm -hmm. they're online all playing together but I also need to now touch on something in relation to online safety and grooming mm -hmm. what if they connect with someone mm -hmm. who's a stranger and who could be a pedophile or someone they don't know that's why it's crucial to monitor what they're doing Ladies, do you know anything about online grooming and how this can be avoided? Well, I'm not sure whether you heard about this, but I think, I think it was 2014. Um, a young boy, 14 years old, was actually murdered. Mm. 14 years 14, old? Yeah, was actually murdered. Um, he was, well, I wouldn't say he was addicted to his game, but he was always online, mm, yeah. playing his games, normally would play with his friends. And gradually, um, this 18 years old got online with them, oh played, you know, played with all his friends or played as a group, but he managed to brainwash him against his friends. Oh my God. You know, and then both of them, so he brainwashed him against his friends, against his parents as well, oh. not to listen to his parents. So he was always playing just with him. And he became very, you know, withdrawn, isolated, isolated yeah. would not want to go to school. And the 18 years old, you know, I think he must have said to me, he was the same age, he was about 15 or 14 as well. This boy believed him and they agreed to meet and he met with him without telling his parents and oh he murdered him. He murdered him. He murdered him. And this is actually a documentary on BBC. Yeah. It's called Murder, Murder Games. Games yeah. yeah. Murder Games. I would really recommend parents to watch that with their you know, with watch the kids. it with their kids. Yeah. Watch it with it is a so must kids, watch. Yes, so yeah. the kids know if you watch it with the kids, the kids know that you're not just saying that as a parent mm -hmm. to deter them from having fun or meeting people online. Mm -hmm. You're saying that and you're, you're watching it with them so that they know that this is the reality. It's the reality of what's life. happening. I totally agree. It's, it's what's out there. I totally agree. So while saying this, so we've seen the positives and we've seen the negatives of gaming. So we now know that it's not an outright ban that should be encouraged. What really needs to be encouraged is stricter regulation and control, monitoring of the kids mm -hmm. and parents being there physically, emotionally, spiritually, prayerfully, pray with your kids, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, pray for your kids and let them know that they're, they're loved and they're protected within their homes. This is so it. they don't need to seek outside love or validation or affirmation. Yeah, I, so I that think... that love yeah. is within the home. You know, speaking, having conversation with you, giving them that time. Yes. You know, my son would come from school and he would tell, he would want to speak to me about 
everything in school. Oh, this happened today. Sometimes I'm, I, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I just want to get on. And I'm, I've had a long day at work. But then mm -hmm. I backtrack and think, oh, I need to listen to them. Yes. Because that's the time. Yes, that's that, the that's that time they need. They want to speak to you. Absolutely. Because if you take that away from them, that's when they go into, you know, yeah. all that, this gaming. Yes, and, that quality yeah. time is really well, time. Their quality is time is very important. Really important. Just leave it's kids to their own devices. Don't leave them in their bedrooms. And as you said, there should be bedtime and there should be strict regulations around bedtime. So yeah. bedtime is bedtime. If you have to have the controllers taken away during bedtime, you oh. do it. If you have to switch off the Wi-Fi ah, during bedtime, there, there is something that because I've heard of. Yeah. 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 Wait for their parents to go to sleep, mm -hmm. and then they get back on the game. On the and because game. you're not, you're sleeping. You're, you're having to go to work the next day, so you obviously don't know what's going on. So I totally agree with so you. So there was Lina. a time we 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 used to um, we collected. We would collect my son's phone from him before he goes to bed mm. because we saw. You know, again, it's about knowing your child as well. If you feel that that your child might get addicted to something. Some kids have some, like, yeah, that, uh, they have that personality. Yeah. Try and, you know, work with them, try and do things differently. So yes. we decided at that time, like yes. this was time when he was doing his GCSEs, no phones around yes. to sleep. Yeah, yes. And we collected that and that yes. and it worked. And it helped. Yeah, and it helped. Yeah, it helped. Yeah. Going back to the point where um, Topsy said about busy parents and you know when you come home and you're tired. Tired, yeah. I know a lot of parents are working parents some are single parent families some are two parent families but just to make ends meet everyone is working mm -hmm. so all this that we're talking about um, having time with your children monitoring and everything mm -hmm. like that I think if you take on board what we've said about getting to know your child speaking with them mm -hmm. making sure that they know the boundaries so that when you're not there when you have a 13 14 15 year old yes. in the house by themselves they have that thing in their head that mama said that we are not permitted to, to, to do that. go online until after I've done this yes. or mm -hmm. that and I'm not allowed to be on online for seven eight hours at yes. a go in my my sister's house there is no TV Monday to Friday the children know it even when as my little girl yeah. comes and you need to catch them young as whether, well. yeah. whether mm. mom or dad is there they know that is the rule whether they're in their house or not you need to no. catch them young you Very can't be young, telling yeah. a 10 year old no TV during the week when it's not something is accustomed to walk them up with yes, it's, it's something that you have yeah. to quickly you know, starts from when they're like toddlers, so they know that these are the rules mm -hmm. of our house, and this is how it's going to be. Yes, yeah, I totally agree. And I it's, agree it all comes back to that structure. Yes, mm -hmm. put that structure, structure in place from day one. Yes, and you know, hopefully, and um, God willing, the, you know, the kids would abide yes. to it. Topsy, I love what you said about ratings age appropriateness and just doing your research about the mm -hmm. game because one thing I've also realized recently is that there's a difference between the effect that Fortnite would have on you and the effect that FIFA for example would have on you mm -hmm. because with Fortnite there are regular updates being made to the game and because they're playing it with other people virtually it's competitive yeah, so yeah. you want to come mm -hmm. back to beat your own previous score and outdo yourself and mm. outdo your mates. Mm. So there's a reason to always go back to it. But with FIFA, you can pick it up, play and drop it mm. and move on with your life. Mm. So that's why we also, uh, that age appropriateness and just researching the type of game is also extremely important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ladies, you said so much and I'm sure that parents watching at home, particularly parents of boys, would have a lot to relate to in terms of what we've all spoken about. I mean, I can relate to everything that you've spoken about and I've taken away a lot as well that I'm going to imbibe. And we have to remember that as parents, I'm going to implore parents to not leave children to their devices. We must always monitor what they do. We must always just be there physically, spiritually, mm -hmm. emotionally for our children because this generation, it's a remarkable one. A lot is happening and we have to keep on our toes and be abreast of what's going on, particularly in relation to technology. And the Bible says that a man without self-control is like a room without walls. And what that means is that anything can come in and affect their mind and take over. And that only means destruction. So children must be taught the ability to have self-control and restraint. We must be on top of this. Because remember, our children are the custodians of our legacy, and through them we have a form of immortality. Until next time, stay blessed.